Welcome to the presentation of Toshi Square. We're getting off to a little bit of a late start, I apologize. But we have a very special guest coming all the way from Australia. He has Australia's first Bitcoin school. He's going to tell you all about that. So without further ado, I want to introduce Kieran. Um, yeah, so our school is the first school in Australia to start accepting Bitcoin. Um, the, yeah, I just probably start with the my type background, so go to the next slide. Um, probably like yourselves, I started with the white paper, so the white paper, like years ago. I started reading it and I was like, oh my god, why does everybody not know about this? This is like the best thing in the world, it's going to change everything. And nobody was listening, I thought it was a lunatic, but talking about that stuff that so nobody understood. Um, and I sort of progressed to mining myself, so just using a computer to mine, as most of you probably have as well. Then sort of moved on to using an asset for a specific miner. And started going to meetups like this, so I think you guys sort of meet up through the meetups website as well. We have the same sort of thing in, in Australia. Probably for more people than you are sort of rock up to that. But um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. And we sort of, there's a lot of startups sort of coming out of that. It's really innovative. Um, so I sort of went with that. And then because I've been working in schools for you know, 10 years, or well, eight years now, um, I thought, well, my school should start accepting Bitcoin. It's just like a logical sort of progression. Um, so I'll get into that, but I'll, I'll tell you a bit about our school first, just so you can sort of get the idea of what we sort of do and what the school's about. Go to the next slide. Um, so we have basically the premise of the school I'm at, um, and I was actually tweeted and, and the job at for the, my school I'm at, and I initially said, looking for a computer gig to work at a school that Disneyland, but didn't, that Walt Disney would have built. I mean, that was hilarious. So I applied for the school, and we've got a bunch of these. They're called Stimulate Learning Platforms. They're like, that's a massive dragon boat built for one of the year three classrooms. You go up the front of it, we've got like a leap motion, so you can like fly through Google Earth and all sorts of stuff. We have those all around the school, so we have like a massive class, and like all crazy stuff they do. It's all sort of technology based, and really fun and fun for the kids. Um, so that sort of gives you an idea of what the school sort of looks like. If you go to the other side, there's a few slides on Minecraft. So, yes, it's all primary. So elementary here, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like prep to year six. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So like, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's like I sort of come from a K twelve school. Um, and it's always like a cut off point at like, you know, when the kids have to go into secondary, where innovation stops and you can stop doing fun things like, and stuff like Bitcoin or like anything that's sort of, you know, innovative or Minecraft even. Like, there's one of us, uh, one of the kids who went to uh, high school from last year came back and said, nah, I'm not allowed to do Minecraft or anything. Just like, shut my mind. It's crazy. But anyway, so we're doing some really cool stuff with Minecraft. Um, started when I got there. If you go to the next slide, uh, this is the QR code that kids build autonomously. So, like, no input from me or any teachers. And it was kids from Prep, which I don't know what you call that here, but it's like before you go to year one, uh, right up to year six, working together. And they went block by block, like, at recess and lunch until they got a working QR code. And that takes you to a website that has like a remote portal, that's what it's called, where the kids sort of do their work. Um, I think that was like amazing. It blew me away, sort of working at the school. Um, and then we sort of progress from there. If you go probably two slides now. Um, we have an environmental studies class as well. So that's where kids learn all of that sort of sustainability and that sort of thing. Um, but well, one of the kids had an idea to sort of build, we've got a, uh, a, a garden at the school. They had an idea to sort of build that in Minecraft first and then replicate it in real life. So they actually went through and went like, right down to like the box size and everything that they have to do, replicate that, and then went and built it in real life. 
I thought it's so like cool and innovative, and I thought it's such an amazing way to sort of use Minecraft and then bring it into the real world. Uh, so if we go to the next slide. This was the next project that I, I've got a group of kids called the Tech Ninjas, and it's a group of kids at my previous school that work at the K-12 school called the Tech Ninjas as well. What we did, we got them to meet up on a server in Minecraft and build the school of the future that they wanted to go to. But not just that, we had them meet up on Hangouts. So they're like, we're like ages apart. So probably from here to LA, it's the same as where my school is to where my old school um, Got them to meet up in real time and then work together. So about six kids in each school working together to actually build the school of the future that they wanted to go to in a virtual world. It's really cool. Here yeah, the next slide. I think that's enough for Minecraft. Um, anyone know this guy here, Aaron Walsh? Really cool guy. You can like follow him on Twitter or whatever. He's like really good. Um, met him last year. I came out here, I went out to LA, should I say, um, for an immersive education conference. And basically, it's all about virtual reality and like how you bring like augmented reality and all this technology and skill to the classroom. And into education. They also did like a different part of it, but I was so focused on this. Um, but it was the first event that I went to that you could actually pay with Bitcoin to go to. I was like, oh my god, finally like, somebody gets it. And he did this like presentation that just blew me away. So I'm meeting up with him, I think next week, you know, going to Boston to meet with him. It's actually a plan one to come to Australia. So if you get a chance, check him out because he you knows his stuff. You get next slide. Um, yeah, so a bit of background on, on school as well. You know, basically, uh, my, my, my affinity is obviously Linux um, and Android, obviously. But if, um, if, if you're going to get kids to sort of decide where they're going to go, well, what our philosophy is is to be platform agnostic. You know, a lot of schools, probably the same here, will say, look, you can you can have uh, one device and that's it, and you're locked into sort of Apple or Windows or whatever. We want the kids to experience every, everything before they go down the BYOD path, which we're rolling out this year. Um, they get access to everything, and they can sort of choose what they want to use. Hopefully Linux, but we'll see. We go next. Uh, Chromebooks as well. Chromebooks are cool. I've got them. I'm actually doing a live broadcast here. So everyone say hi. You can. There's probably some kids watching in Australia. Um, but yeah, I think they're really cool and cheap. I think it's, uh, can't use Bitcoin on them yet, I don't think anyone knows the difference to me. But um, I think just, just for a device that's you know under 200 bucks, you can just get up on the air and get going. Definitely the way to go. And the Chromecast is really cool as well. If you haven't checked them out yet, like 30 bucks, I think, Australian, and you can throw up to any anything in SHDI. Totally worth it for school too. Go next. Uh, Intel, Intel have been really cool with us, um, particularly with Bitcoin, but I'll get on to that later. Um, anyone know this guy, Jimmy the Robot? Awesome, awesome thing that's coming out. It's supposed to come out at the end of last year, but they sort of delayed it. It's a 3D printed robot that you can print off and you can program and do what you want. Um, they, yeah, they sort of promised it to us at the end of last year. They, they reckon they're going to give it to us yeah, next month. But what they did give us was a bunch of Galileo boards. I don't know if you've seen those, but they're like Arduinos. And I'm pretty sure you can buy them as well, because they're basically what they're going to be um, Really interesting, anyway. But I'll, I'll get onto the Intel later on. Go next slide. Uh, KSV is another program. You can probably go next slide. It's kind of like the. Um, the, I would say the Minecraft in space. Basically, what you can do is design rockets, and that's what we have the kids to know. Um, and you have to be really, uh, really think about like the mathematics and all sorts of stuff, like yeah, efficiency and that sort of Like, if you listen to the kids that are talking about how they build their rockets to get to certain planets, they really, really have to work together and coordinate. And just the conversations they have are really fascinating like in terms of, well, just in terms of like, uh, you can sort of 3D print off your rockets and that sort of thing. But right, anyway, I'll go to the next slide. <laughs> um, Oculus Rift, anyone know that? Yeah. Um, so we're developing at the moment in Unreal Engine. 
really, really cool. Unity, we were sort of looking at, but I think Unreal was sort of the way to go. Um, the, I think the benefits of using Unreal over Unity is you can sort of use it more sort of cross platforms. Um, but the, yeah, the, we had one here that actually developed the game uh, last week, actually, you got finished. And you get like nothing too, too fantastic, but you can sort of jump into it and see a game in one, like a 10 year old sort of made. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you can get inside. Um, this is a Skype that we did with a school career up in the top left hand corner. Um, it's pretty cool. The kids could actually do a live tour of the school in Korea across the globe, sort of thing. Um, right up on the right, obviously, we use Hangouts a lot. Um, that Hangout in particular was one of the few that kids were doing uh, Minecraft, I think it was. Um, so it's pretty cool. They're going to do a live in the air, much like we're going to be Next. Uh, 3D printing, so obviously, we're doing a lot of 3D printing. Um, I think MakerBot's made here. Megabot's really cool, we're looking at getting one of those later on. The one we have at the moment isn't that great, so we're sort of looking at developing something better. But um, yeah, you can get this up. Uh, the Coda Dojo, that's, I don't know if you guys have heard of that before. We started off the first one in Melbourne, sort of run all over the world. Really cool, they um, basically get a bunch of volunteers together to start working uh, with kids and learning from each other, so it's like, Kids learning from older people and vice versa. And um, yeah, it's been really, really interesting. So that's, that's what we've been developing in the Unreal Engine for the Oculus. Um, so there's two, two projects the kids found. One was, you can probably go next one. Uh, Adonir, anyone heard of that? No. So it's uh, basically an array of satellites that they're putting up. I think this is an Indiegogo. Um, so the kids asked me if I could invest in that for them, so I have. And just to sort of show them and get the idea sort of happening that they can create something and have it out there that people can invest in sort of all over the world. This thing really struck me because it's basically an array of satellites that replicate websites out to them that you can't take down. So like, you know, websites that sort of get, get taken down nowadays by whatever it is, government or who knows. Um, this, it's going to be up there forever. Whatever you put there, and I'm touching, it's always up and taken down. So it's fantastic. So, but I put my money into that. I think it's getting started as of like next week. You go to the next one. Where we get The outer Yeah, well, that's the idea. So I think what they're going to start doing is like Twitter, Wikipedia, and then you submit your sites. So they just stay there. So, so it looks really good. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, I'm not sure totally how it's going to work, but it sounds like it's definitely cool. So you have your website on their service. I think it's an end as well. So it's just replicated. Oh, and the really cool thing about that one is that that's what I mentioned. Um, anything with a 3G device can get connected to that immediately. So it's for third world countries really that don't have access to information. Boom, they're connected directly to everything that we sort of take for granted. Um, which brings me to this as well. Storage, do I ever know that? This is built off blockchain technology. And this is blowing me away. This, this is what I was sort of thinking of when I first read Satoshi's white paper. I was like, oh my god, this is going to like solve everything for like the banking, banking and all that sort of just monetary and data currency and all that. But these guys are taking it to the next level. They're putting data. So this is basically, on the blockchain, this is basically a decentralized version of Dropbox. We put up the data onto a blockchain and it gets replicated throughout the blockchain and put always closest to you. So I don't know totally how they're doing it, but it blew me away because the concept of it. So it's probably worth checking out. And I'll invest in this as well. And I think that we had a Kickstarter program for that as well. Um, so yeah, that brings me to the school. So probably about a year ago, I decided to uh, accept Bitcoin for the school. And uh, 
the, it, was a, it was a bit of, a bit of uh, controversy with the, with the Department of Education because they didn't know what to do with it. So they thought, um, what was the starters was actually the, the, the person for our school said, oh, what is this? How do I put it on the ledger? It's blah, blah, blah. And I um, thought, oh, okay, well, if I get a couple of universities to donate to the school, just enough to get some raspberry pies, then oh, everything should be all right. That's what you can sort of imagine. Um, so I did. So I wrote to these universities. We had a few different meetups. They don't know enough, like nothing. Probably enough to get two or three raspberry pies at the time. Um, and, and that's the address if anyone wants to donate to the school. But, um, yeah, so it sort of went, went through, we'll get the next slide, um, went through and then it was multiple meetings with the Department of Education and with the principal, and they're like, what is this? The usual sort of stuff, like, isn't this used for drug dealing and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, we're just sort of demonstrating that you can, on the other side of the planet, give money to some kids in Australia to buy some raspberry pies and give them to the school too. They're like, no, 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 well, we, we don't understand how this sort of works, like how, how I can put this on a ledger, and blah, blah, blah. And basically, the upshot of it was, the money's still sitting there, we're not allowed to use it, and this money has been donated to a school in Australia from universities across the other side of the planet, and the Department of Education has said, no, you can't use it. So it's just blown my mind, and that's basically why I'm here today, is just Sort of spread the word about this so it gets the department and sort of talking about it because uh, I think it's really important. But if you go to the next slide, I think I'll put one more. Um, yeah, so, so having said all that, the really cool thing was with the answer. So I started teaching the kids about blockchain technology and sort of how it works and thinking about different cryptocurrencies in your mind, like the with the computer power we have, it probably wasn't more yeah. in Bitcoin, but it was cool sort of getting them to sort of think about that um, sort of thing. But they telling us Intel, Intel said, oh, awesome, we'll give you a server, and you can start farming with that as well. Um, so they're donating that to us this year, I think, probably the same time we're getting Jimmy the robot. Um, but the, the really fascinating thing with that was the department didn't like that either. They said, anything you mind, where does it go? What are we going to do with it? So we're still going to buy, but we don't know where, <laughs> what we can actually do with the money until they make a decision on what we can do with it. Now, I, I probably should have just gone ahead with it myself, but now that it's all sort of documented and we've got like an official document with the Department of Education about it, we can't touch the money. It's really obscure. Um, but yeah, that's basically the story of my school. Uh, the first school in Australia was in Big Bang. So we go to the last slide, we got one more. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, guys. <laughs>